Hey angels, it's Lookin' Bretz, aka Dom. I am here with a new video and I am trying something different. My setup is a little bit different. I moved the Bratz pad off to the side and I brought out my lovely acrylic table here to show you the main focus of what I want to discuss today. So whenever I post photos of my displays or my collection, that kind of stuff, or in the future if I do a collection video and I swear I want to do one, it's just that every time I go to do one I lose all my motivation to for some reason, but I'm going to try to very soon. We'll see what happens with that, but I really wanted to share this piece of my collection because I do get a lot of questions about it, about what these are, how to find them, and I have mixed answers <laughs> on a few of those things. But if you can't see, they are kind of blending in with all of my other dolls back here. But on the table itself, so right here, you will see four little statues, figurines, and then you'll see two smaller figurines down here. And this is the Bratz Collectibles line, and this was a line of ceramic figures that MGA Entertainment came out with in late 2004, early 2005. The earliest traces I can find of it is late 2004, so that's where I really pinpoint their release date, and then they were being sold on this website. I always knock into my Bratz pad. <laughs> no matter where I put the Bratz pad, I'm going to bump into it. So they were being sold on BratzCollectibles.com, and it's a very funky spelling of collectibles, and I could understand if it was like collectibles, like cool and then ectibles, but it's like cool and then it's like ek, tib, l, z, and it, it becomes a little bit confusing because then people will probably add an e in there, or we'll just call it collectibles with a z, or we'll just call it a collectible. And I always found the spelling a little bit odd, but I also feel like Bratz had a knack for really trying to, like, funkify spellings. Like, accessories would be, like, A-C-C-E-S-S-O-R-E-E-Z and not I-E-Z. So, it, it's really... I should win a spelling bee, because that was a lot. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it's Bratz has a history of, like, trying to do, like, a funky fashion spin on the spellings of certain names, especially character names, but also in, like, merchandise that they've done and also little tidbits here and there. So this is one of those instances where you're going to see that. But this is my Bratz Collectibles collection, and I think these are some of the most unique, not the most unique, but some of the most unique pieces in my collection. So, of course, I love Bratz, and I first and foremost think Bratz is definitely a doll brand, but also what I think it really became known for was becoming a lifestyle brand because a lot of young people, especially young girls, wanted to live a quote-unquote Bratz lifestyle, and MGA really knew how to put out products that really helped, you know, with that idea of living a Bratz lifestyle. So they always had like electronics, they'd have decor, they'd have makeup, they'd have whatever there was, you can name it there. I just did a video for the official Bratz page where I talked about Bratz deodorant. Like it really was a huge licensing venture and also just a huge merch venture, which was why I created lookinbratz.com. And if you don't know yet, lookinbratz.com has a database of over 10,000 Bratz products. I opened it back in 2020, but I have been working on it since 2015. Years and years of research went into it, and one of my most wanted items were the Bratz Collectibles figures. Out of all the 10,000 plus items, there's a lot more being added soon, and there's going to be huge updates. I know I say that a lot, but I swear it's coming soon. It's just my life is super busy, but I'm really excited about the updates coming, and you might be able to see some of those updates as we go through the site in this video. And out of all those 10,000 products, I love the Bratz collectibles. I love it when it's not just a Bratz doll. Like, sure, like, Bratz dolls are cool. Like, I love Bratz. Like, they're my number one fashion doll that I love. But then I think along with that, I really love the memorabilia. I love all the merchandise. I have a lot of Bratz merchandise. And you may be able to see that it actually takes up some of my shelving. So, like, I have some Bratz 
keychains up there. Maybe I should do a separate video on those because I feel like people might be interested in those. I get questions about those too. Those are kind of like Kinder Surprise keychains, but not quite. And then I have like perfume up there. I have some lip glosses. I have the Pez and Click dispensers. And then I have more keychains at the bottom down there. I'll do a separate video, or maybe in my collection video whenever I do it. I have some Brett's makeup there, and there's actually some stuff missing off that shelf because we're going to look at it today. I actually, behind me, I have a lunchbox, I have a jewelry box. Like, I really love Brett's merch, I think is the gist. And that's also, like, why I created LookinBrats.com. I really wanted to archive it, preserve the information for future reference, and also have it act as a guide and resource for Brett's fans to look at and to also either find things that they remember like a nostalgia trip or even things that they're trying to recollect and then have a reference of what it looks like because I think in a lot of people's minds especially when you grew up with certain brands is that you might have an idea of something that you owned but you don't know quite what it was so that's what I like about lookingbreadts.com is that I was able to do something where like you can look through things and try to find things or even if you can't find a certain thing you can like you know reach out to me and see if maybe it's on another page or if you might be able to add something I, I think it's a I love my website sorry I, I'm gonna talk about my website because I feel like it, it, it it's really just it's been a huge passion project of mine and there's a lot more to come for it so I'm just excited for all the new stuff coming like I'm oh it's gonna be so so good Anyways, we are here to talk about the Bratz Collectibles, and I finally finished my set of the girls. So they released four Collectibles girls, which is of course the core four, Sasha, JD, Yasmin, Chloe, and I don't think there was any more ever produced after that. I don't think these actually sold well, if I'm being honest. These were an online exclusive as far as I know, although something interesting happened with the most recent one I bought, which I will share in just a moment. Actually, I think I know exactly what happened with the one I bought, but we'll talk about that in just a minute. Or maybe a few minutes. We'll so yes, these were sold off Bratz Collectibles. This was direct to buy from MJ Entertainment. They were shipping these out themselves. People were able to buy it from this website, but they were kind of on the website for quite a bit. I really don't think they sold well. I don't know if maybe MGA was able to sell them all off. I'm going to assume they were. They were a limited edition, and we will get into the edition numbers in just a bit. And I really don't know like how this went about back in the day. I do remember the website as a kid. And I never thought, like, of asking my mom or anybody to buy me one. I don't know if they were even available by the time I knew about it. But the website can actually be found through the web archive. And I have my laptop here, and we can take a quick look at it. So, if you don't know the web archive, can you see my screen? This might be a little bit difficult, because it's almost all white. <laughs> so, earliest I can find is 2004. It looks like they came out just in time for the holiday season for 2004. When we click on the website, there are some pieces of the page that are broken, but you can sort of see here. Oh, I wish this wasn't like all like super bright, but I think you can get sort of the gist like it had Bratz collectibles in the corner there. Oh, here, this looks better. You can see they featured Yasmin up here, Chloe was down here, and then there's a broken image of one of the pets which was Kendall. Something I find interesting is that they gave them names. So this one was called Karaoke Cool Yasmin, and then there's Ready to Rock Chloe, Kicking It Kendall. There's a few others. There's only really seven in the line as far as I know. I don't think there was any others that came out unless I can't find information on it. So this is all we, this is, this is it. Except for I'm missing one. But I did complete the rest, so I did get Chloe recently, and I actually got her in the mail yesterday, and I have to say I was heartbroken. Like, heartbroken. You broke a grown man's heart. <laughs> because I opened her up, and she was not padded in her box. And so for reference, this is the box, and I think the boxes are really cool. I already have two of these, and I might get rid of this one, because it is a little bit beat up. And it says Bratz Collectibles, it has a cute sticker with Jade and Chloe. And then a cute little B right there. And then you open it up and then there should be like a foam piece in there. There should be two foam pieces and the ceramic figure should be wedged in between both foam pieces. But there's only one foam piece in it and then the doll, like the ceramic figure in a baggie. And the 
it was cracked like in multiple spots so I did a super glue job today I talked to the seller to see if they might be able to either refund it or to some have some sort of remedy to this so I'll show you where it was cracked and honestly at first glance except for this part you can't really notice the other spots but right here on the leg it was cracked off it cracked off at the base here the dresser was cracked off and so I had to glue that part on the edge of the dresser here was cracked off so I glued that on that stayed on pretty well and there was something else there's still some pieces that I can't find like you can see the back of her skirt right there I did I did glue on about part of her skirt that I did find so only really the parts you can't see which I guess is nice that you can't see the cracked parts although I just wish it hadn't been cracked at all I wish the seller had wrapped her up at her because the seller did take pictures of her like this so it wasn't broken when the seller was trying to sell it and there's also a piece of hair here which is another part I realized was missing and I couldn't find the piece of hair although I will say not super noticeable maybe I'll try to cover it up with some paint but Chloe was the last one I needed and she arrived damaged and I was so upset about it but I was trying to make sure I didn't have to return her before I fixed her up and the seller is going to try to remedy the situation which is nice and there's also a crack I just noticed again I noticed it earlier but it's not something I had to glue is like back here like underneath her knee it's really upsetting that the seller didn't take better care of the wrapping and the box was like it was in the box like this it had the one thing the doll was in a bag and it wasn't wedged in between two it only had the one foam piece and then it was packaged in a bubble mailer which is a big no-no in my opinion and I don't want to like rag on the seller like I don't want to make it seem like oh you know like whatever but I am disappointed in how that went about I wouldn't have packaged the doll like that I think I would have at least bubble wrapped the ceramic figure in the box before packing it up and I don't know if I would have packed it in a bubble mailer like it doesn't seem like the best course of action in my opinion but I think the seller was nice about it and hopefully they'll send me something of equal value to remedy the situation because they said they would send another doll that's not porcelain so <laughs> maybe they should just wean off of selling porcelain or ceramic dolls. But something I did notice with this one, so obviously it has the barcode, it says Brass Collectibles, Chloe Figurine, and I think this ended up in like a Goodwill or a thrift store because they were trying to sell it for $3.99, and then you can see it actually got marked down to $2.50, and I think that also just shows that these aren't technically very valuable, and I think it really is depending on how much you're willing to pay. I think the easiest ones to come by have surprisingly been Sasha and Yasmin, those are the ones I see often. Lately, I've been seeing Jade a lot, but the one I've never Never seen in all these years except for one time on offer up or something like that or like I offer like one of those apps like where you can buy things locally is Chloe and Chloe has been super hard to come by for me so of course I jumped on the opportunity to get her as soon as I saw her I did pay a somewhat hefty price but not too hefty for her for Jade I don't recall how much I paid for Jade honestly I got her off Mercari off of a really nice seller and I think originally I bought one of the pets off that seller and or I bought something off that seller I don't recall but they were super nice and then they offered to sell me Jade so I said yeah I'd love to buy Jade off of you and uh, at first the seller didn't want to sell me the first initial item that I bought from them because they weren't sure if I was a reseller or not so they were like how do I know if you're not going to go off and sell this and this was like the one time where being looking brats <laughs> got me something good because <laughs> I said, oh, like, I run lookingbreads.com. Like, I like to preserve these items. I like to keep them in my collection. I don't resell. So, very nice person who sold Jade to me and who was also, like, needed to make some extra cash. So, I was like, I'll help you out. <laughs> but I didn't pay too much for Jade. I think I paid under $50 for her, which was nice. And then Yasmin and Sasha, I got for Christmas 2017, I want to say from my mother and she got them off of eBay. Those were also a little bit under $50 about a year or so ago, or maybe more recently. I mean, timeline is getting mixed up. Yasmin was super cheap. She was like $15. And then recently Jade, I saw sold on Mercari for about 15 to 30. And I think she's actually on eBay right now. So 
I don't know. Maybe once I post this, someone is going to be like, ooh, like, let me go get them. And it may... I know with them, after I posted my Off the Hook video, a lot of people ran to go get Off the Hook dolls. So I don't know. Sometimes when I post things, people go run to buy them. Sometimes not. I don't care otherwise. I just think it's funny <laughs> the way I might get some people interested in something that is a little bit harder to find. Oh, it's been a combination of like getting gifts, but also it's been mainly eBay, Mercari. I'm sure if you look at maybe Facebook Marketplace, I offer, offer up, whatever the apps are, like you can find local deals. I mean, you have to really go searching for them because I don't know if you're going to often come by these. Maybe by chance, per luck, you'll find them at a thrift store or something. You just never know with items like this, especially... Ooh, it's been a long time since these came out now. It's been almost 18 years probably since these came out, so... You just don't know where these could have ended up, and I'm glad at least some of them have ended up in my collection. I am disappointed about Chloe, but it's completely okay. Like, maybe not completely okay, but it's okay for now. <laughs> And then for the cats, I actually did not know. So this one is the Bridget one. And so the cats ones are actually little trinket boxes. And you can store probably like jewelry, something else in there. Use your imagination. This is pretty cute though. It's like the Bratz cats. This one is Bridget. And this one I actually did not see on the site. But I think I actually did. I was looking through more pages on the site. And I actually ended up finding her on there. This one's Kendall. And she's on like a lip... And then, of course, it is a trinket box. I haven't stored anything in them. Maybe I will eventually. I like just having them for display. Like, I think they're just all super cute. I keep them by my desk. And I, I love, love these so much. And let's actually do, like, a little breakdown of each one that I have, aside from the pets. So, of course, I have Chloe here. And let me actually show you. Wait. Hold on. We're going to go to lookingbrats.com. Bam. Lookingbrats.com. This is the homepage, and as you can see, a new look is coming soon. And we're going to go up here at the pages, and then when you hover over database, you'll see a whole list of Bratz spinoffs. I'm actually going to add mini Bratz there soon, because I do consider that a separate spinoff. And I'm going to go down to Bratz, and then it's loading... This is all getting a makeover soon, but it's gonna it's fun looking at what it looks like now because I really love using this website. My computer's touch screen, so let's like touch screen it for a bit. I'm gonna go to 2004. So when you click, hello, when you click on it, whoop, there we go. Click on the year, it'll take you to the year, and then you'll see all these categories. We have like apparel, we have cosmetics. We have decor, we have dolls, of course. We have, like, food items. I try to archive as much as possible. The only thing I really stay away from archiving is certain clothing items, just because, for various reasons, because I want to keep certain people away from my website, and Bratz did come out with some licensed apparel items that I just don't want... I, I don't want to, like... <laughs> I don't want to outright say it. I just want to avoid creepy people and I also I just I don't think it's I don't need needing to archive a lot of that stuff honestly like whatever not like it's nothing bad but I think when there's certain items that are tied to a children's property like I just want to sort of avoid archiving it I just think that some people can take things a little bit creepily and I'm just not here for those vibes honestly so I'm avoiding it. And also, it's just hard to, like, archive apparel. Like, so much could have came out. So much has probably come out. So, like, anything, like, clothing items, like, I just completely avoid. Unless it's, like, certain costume pieces I will keep in. I've been debating if I want to do the costumes or not. It's been hard to, like, keep track of those. But I think I might. Maybe I'll, like, reserve that for, like, when I have more free time. And maybe after I do the updates. And what else... I do a lot of, like, the bags, though, like, backpacks, purses, watches, like, tins, all of that, like, I'll keep in the archives, but sorry, that's not, we're not here for, to talk about apparel, but I just wanted to give some background around that, because some people have asked me about certain apparel items, and I'm like, I don't know, <laughs> and, okay, so we're here, and I classified this as collectibles, so I'm gonna go to the collectibles, and click on collectibles, 
I wish this wasn't so bright. Okay, I'm zooming in. Collectibles. Take me to the collectibles page. And then these are actually the first four results on this collectibles page. There's a few other things, like there's some keychains that came out that year that were part of the chocolate Easter eggs. And then there's also the collector cards. But we click on it. And then we have Chloe. We have Jade. We have Sasha. We have Yasmin. And then, so these actually some of like the... First of all, the characters themselves are based off of key art that was used for some Flashback Fever merchandise. And I'll give you some examples, which is what's actually missing off my shelf up there and <laughs> really giving into me being obsessed with expired children's makeup is that I collect it as well. Like, I love to preserve this kind of stuff. So here's one of the Flashback Fever instances where you'll see Flashback Fever artwork. So this is Chloe's artwork and then... Actually, this isn't the artwork that actually translates into this figurine, ironically. The rest are, but this is the one case where it's not. But this is what I mean by key art. So, like, you might not see some of these fashions on the dolls, but you'll see it on the merchandise that they're related to. And this is Chloe, though. I'm trying to think of where Chloe's art is from. Because now looking back, I don't recall where Chloe's art is from. And the posing is not quite the same. If I find out, I'll like put a picture here somewhere. I almost don't think this might be Chloe art. I think this might have been originally a Fiona or Never artwork. You'll probably find out in the side here where I post a picture. But yeah, here's Chloe. And then she actually, on her little vanity here, so I don't know about anything about this dresser, to be honest. I think it's just a dresser made for this. But this is the mirror makeover. So this is like an actual Bratz product, and I actually own it. It's in my closet right now being stored away, but... We'll go to the Look and Brats database and we will look at the 2003 supplies page. And this was a part of the Design and Style Bedroom Appeal Collection and it's called the Mirror, mirror Makeover. And you can see there the shape of the mirror. I need to update this with an inbox picture because I actually have an inbox. But you can see how the mirror actually mimics that mirror sort of. And then when you hover over it, you can see the title of it. And then now what I'm adding is like characters featured on this product. And it'll be like, it's Yasmin, but she's only on the packaging, not on the actual product. Or it'll be like Chloe and Yasmin are featured on this backpack or something like that. So that's something I'm going through. So you have to hover over the image or if you're on mobile, there should be like a little purple dot in the corner. And then you click on that little purple dot and even on tablets too, and then it'll show you more information about certain products. Some may not have it, some may get it eventually. It's all being in the process of like being updated. And if you go to like the doll pages for all of the Bratz pages, like the main brand, you'll see like the screen, you'll see the face mold, the head mold, that kind of thing, but it's not updated for everything yet. And some things are being reworked as I'm learning new things, so. Be patient on that front. That'll all come as soon as I'm ready to officially say, oh, this is all updated. So just things I'm working on. But I love Chloe's design. And as you can see on the base, they have Chloe there in the dollhouse font. And then, of course, her icon. And then she's like on like this little base here. It's pink with all of these yellow. Are these yellow stars? No, these are white stars. <laughs> I think the light just makes it look a little bit yellow. And I think this one's really cute. I love this outfit. And I think also, like, the face paint on this one is one of the best I've seen on the Bratz Collectibles. So I am very happy to have this in my collection. Like, it's about time. Like, I've been really trying to complete this lineup. But again, it's just been really hard to get them all. And then moving on to Yasmin. This is an actual case where you will see the key artwork being reproduced. So you can see Yasmin with the scarf there with the half ponytail. And then in this instance, so she has like a similar base. She of course has her name, her icon, and then we have like little squigglies here, like little stars. I believe this is the Curls MT font, but it's like just the star. They use that a lot throughout the brand. And she's actually holding a microphone because she's connected to the karaoke machine, which when we go to lookinbrats.com, you can find that on the 2003 electronics page. And this was the crazy cool karaoke machine 
from the electric funk line and then hover over that it'll actually show you Yasmin was featured on the packaging because that's Yasmin there but she wasn't featured on the actual product something that I really like about this one is that they really got all the details of the karaoke machine they have the stars in the back they have the cord like where you plug in things added an actual fake cord here to the microphone and I think it's really cool to see the artwork of the characters be produced in some form that isn't exactly a doll, but it is something that's similar to a doll, like it's a collectible. And for Yasmin specifically, in 2005 for, I believe it was the Livin' Bratz line, or it was just like, it had the same branding as Livin' Bratz, but they produced a jewelry holder where it's also this Yasmin, and it's like a completely different interpretation of that artwork. And also like different colors, same posing, same like scenario here, but obviously interpreted very, very differently. This Yasmin looks a little wacky, but I have to say this was low-key a grail of mine. And it's a little jewelry holder, like you can put earrings up here, there's like little slots for earrings. You can store more stuff in there. And I thought this was really cool, like she looks, she looks kind of weird, she looks a little, you know like she's not <laughs> she's not fully like she she looks like the miley cyrus meme or like the wild wild west dana meme <laughs> but it's really fun to see like an imp interpretation of that that's different and i love this jewelry holder i i don't think it's as hard to come by now maybe it's like more limited quantity to find them but i think it's just so interesting to see two different basically like figurine interpretations of that artwork. And then moving on, we have Jade and probably like my favorite Jade artwork moment. And if you remember lookinbreadths.com, the day it launched on May 4th, 2020, it was this picture of Jade. It was the artwork and it was just her face and it said, welcome to lookinbreadths.com, your number one source for all things breaths. And here she is. I love this Jade artwork. I love the posing. I love this moment. And instead, like, at first, it's, like, sometimes it's, like, Jade like this. And then sometimes it's Jade just, like, looking all cool and stuff. Like, very mysterious, very, like, a spy detective moment. But this time, she's actually on the phone. She has her hand in her pocket. And this phone, it looks like it's, like, probably based off something, like, that could have been actually produced, like, for real people, but I see it more as an interpretation of the Slumber Party phones that came with the Slumber Party dolls, because it's supposed to, like, mimic, like, fuzz or fur, but it's just, like, ceramic, like, it's molded. And then we have those, like, fun little stars again. We have Jade, we have her icon. I love this. I love this one. And I'm really happy I added Jade to my collection. I don't have her certificate unfortunately i actually have certificates for all the others except for one of the pets and we'll actually get into the certificates after we go through each of these but this is jade and i love this this feels like quintessential jade to me like the pigtails the bang the, it's very like cool it's very different as compared to the others who are kind of like you know posing with furniture she's like interacting with her object and she also looks very like mysterious like she's a detective and she's on the case it's like a fashion detective and then moving on we have sasha also also jade's artwork is actually not the same on this packaging but they did use that artwork of jade on certain flashback fever products and here's sasha whose artwork actually is featured on this flashback fever fashion passion nail and gloss set and here is sasha hers is a bit more basic i think she's really cute though like i love her posing like it's very unique and one of my friends was like can you send me a picture of that sasha like i like the way she's posed and i was like sure and this alarm clock i don't think was produced for brett's i could be very wrong but I don't, I, I was looking through the database and I couldn't find anything similar to it, but I could be missing something. Maybe I overlooked something, but it's a very basic like setup. It's just a dresser with an alarm clock. And then Sasha surveyed in front of said dresser and alarm clock, her name, icon, in her little flashback fever artwork fit. Very cute. Her makeup is very glittery. And when I was trying to film her for a reel, 
it kind of like kept glaring so her face looks a little bit blurry sometimes when I try to like take pictures or shoot her and then I did show these before but basically this is like the first edition pets cats just being posed on top of like you know a little cushion here and then the lips it is a cute moment I really do like these I think it was easier to capture the look of the pets because these are based on actual sort of like cartoonish plushies whereas the brats it's based off of artwork which in turn is supposed to like mimic the dolls if i'm explaining that correctly but those are my brats collectibles the only one i'm missing actually let me check the database to show you which one i'm missing i'm missing jolie and she's on this cute little couch moment so she's like the last one I need. I don't know if they did one for the other pet. Who is the last pet? I think it's Daphne. I don't think they did one for Daphne, to be honest. And if not, I've completely missed it. But I do think it's only seven of them. Four of the girls and three of the pets. But this is the one I'm missing as far as I know. So hopefully one day I will come across her. I don't know. It could be tomorrow it could be next week it could be years from now it could be two months from now i feel like my collection has added up over time and i feel like it's important to note that it has been over time it wasn't like an instant gratification type of thing it took me a while to build up this small niche of my collection here as well as the majority of my collection not everything with collecting has to be instant gratification and i think that's what leads to a lot of people to pay a lot of absurd prices and not to like call people out but that is one of my issues with the collecting community right now especially with brad stalls is that people are willing to pay some really absurdly high prices in order to have the instant gratification of owning something when you can probably wait some time and find find it a lot cheaper, honestly. But that's just my little two cents about that. You don't have to listen to me. But as somebody who has been collecting for a long time, it, it took me a while to, to build and it took me a while to build this specific collection. I'm happy with where it's at right now. Hopefully one day I will find the missing piece and I can call it a complete collection of Bratz collectibles. But the last things I really wanna show from my Bratz collectibles is the certificate of authenticities or certificates of authenticity, I should say. And I love the way these came. And the only one I don't have is Jade's, but I do have Yasmin and Sasha's. They are stored away right now. But Chloe surprisingly came with hers. I was expecting it not to, but underneath that one foam piece, of course I found it. And I will say it's in pretty pristine condition. It says Certificate of Authenticity, Bratz Collectibles. This certifies that this is an authentic, limited edition Bratz Collectible. And this is Chloe, number 456 out of 2,500 produced. So we're looking at a quantity of 2,500. I believe each character got 2,500. And it says at the bottom, celebrating the style that is Bratz, this edition will never be available quite like this again. And whoa, were they right because they were harder to come by these days. And I also think they didn't sell out. So whoever got them, got them, I guess. I don't know, but I do love this artwork. I love the fact that it comes with this really cool certificate of authenticity. And that's something we're seeing now with the designer dolls that have been coming out the past two years is that they come with these certificates. And I love that. I think it adds something extra special to the dolls and the products. And we also have a separate one for the cats. So whereas this one is more of like a trapezoid shape that's like very classic Bratz, this one has more of like a regal shape and a lot more like decor around it. And then we have this artwork right here. It says Bratz Pets Collectibles. This certifies that this is an authentic limited edition Bratz Pets Collectible. Kind of close a number. So this one is out of 2000. I don't have the certificate for the other one, but this one is for Kendall. And this is number 496 out of 2000 produced. So I have 456, I have 496. I don't remember the numbers for Yasmin or Chloe, to be honest. And similar to the other one, it says, celebrating the style that is Bratz Pets. This edition will never be quite available like this again. I think these are really cool relics. I love this. Like, this is my niche. I love historical Bratz things. That's why I like to do things like Bratz-tory, which is Bratz history. So yeah, that's my little 
that's my gig. But that's all I have to say about Brett's collectibles, and I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that this answered your questions, potentially. I'm not sure. And if you're wondering how much you should pay for one of these, I'll say under 50 bucks, honestly, unless you're really desperate. But I would say under 50 bucks, like, do not pay overpriced listings. Like, I don't think it's worth it. Unless you're, you know, like me and you really want these and you just want to pay a price for instant gratification, then like, hey, go for it. Pay whatever price you would like to. But I honestly think under 50, considering they initially didn't sell well, but I also guess I could add to the rarity of them. It's really like a toss up here. But, you know, preserve your wallet if you can. Thank you so much for watching. I really do, do hope that you enjoyed this. And if there's anything else in my collection, like a specific piece of merchandise or a doll or something that you might want more context on, please just don't let it be like one single doll. Or, like, don't let it be like a Hollywood style Chloe. Like, I'm not going to do historical context on something like that. But maybe something like a certain line of like, you know, dolls or... I don't know, something that I have, potentially, or something that you see on the Look and Brats database. Um, visit lookandbrats.com, by the way. Like, come on, don't... I feel like people think I'm just, like, a social media person, but I really use social media to support my website. And I, you know, it's become more of, like, me, like, sort of becoming, like, an influencer of sorts, I guess you can say, over the past year or two. But really, like, it is... For me, it's about my website. It's about my passion for brats and also just dolls right now. So, yeah, support me, please. And also, buy my merch. I make some cute merch. I have a lot more cute merch coming out. I'm really excited for the new merch. But in the meantime, I this is my Space Angels World Tour 2005 shirt. This one and the Rock Angel shirts, like, people really love. I'm hitting my brats pet. But yeah, this one and my Rock Angels ones are, like, really popular. But I haven't made a sale in a minute, and I know everyone's kind of hard on money, so I understand if you can't. But if you can support Lickin' Bratz, I could use the support. <laughs> but yeah, thank you for watching this video. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel. If you want to see more Bratz content and doll content in general, make sure to follow me on all socials. Lickin' Bratz, hold the G on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok. And also check out lickandbrats.com. That is my pride, my joy, my baby. And thanks for watching. I will see you all in the next video. Bye.